The difference between a compressor and a lot of your other effects, including your other Dynamics processors, is that the compressor requires a little bit more problem solving. You have to think a little bit more about your settings if you're trying to go for a particular sound. And this is why you always need to have intentions. And again, when it's not fitting, just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. That's like my go-to phrase when it comes to processing audio. But we're gonna use a compressor here to emulate and do what we were doing with the transient designer. Okay, and it can be a little bit more difficult here. But right now, let's say we, we have our kick sound. And we want to just like loosen up this transient. We want to make it quieter. That's pretty easy to do in the compressor because with our compressor, the only thing we can do is gain reduction, which is different to what we saw with the transient designer. With the transient designer, what you really have is like a compressor and you also have an expander. And an expander is exactly the opposite of a compressor. Instead of the ratio being, for example, like uh, two to one, it would be something like one to two, meaning that every time one decimal crossed the threshold, it would output two decibels as compared to every time two decibels cross the threshold, only one gets output. You don't need to uh, confuse yourself too much with that. You don't need to like start slamming your head against the wall or anything. Um, but it is important to uh, grasp the idea that a transient designer is really simple because if we turn it towards bitter, it's just making the transient louder. But with a compressor, we can only impart gain reduction. So I can't take this ratio and flip it on its head. So uh, when we do try to make the transient stick out more, we're gonna have to think a little bit more cleverly and start thinking about that now um, as I go through the first example, which is bringing the transient down. And bringing the transient down should be really easy for you. And again, this is all gonna come down to our attack and our release time. If I wanna bring down the transient, I look at this signal, the transient's the very first thing. So I need as fast an attack time as I can possibly get. So I'll bring that all the way down. And let's go ahead here and see what's going on. All right, so we're getting very little movement. And the reason is because our threshold is not going uh, below where the audio signal is peaking out at. So if we look, we can see this blue. And once I get my threshold to go near that blue, we're gonna start to see some reduction. And there we're seeing it. So I'm just gonna bring it down to about here or so. And already if I bypass this, Pretty big difference. So let's go for maybe 4 dB of uh, gain reduction. And I could do that by either bringing the threshold down further or increasing this ratio. Let's go ahead and increase the ratio. All right, that's probably a little bit too much, maybe a 1.8. That's about where I want it to be. And here, in this case, you can really experiment with the release. If our release is too fast, we're really not gonna be getting that much gain reduction, okay? So you're gonna hear this, if I go to 20, it's trying to come back really quickly. And we're not then at that point really bringing down the transient enough to the point where we can bring the level up later on and make it appear as though it's louder. So I'm gonna actually take this release and go somewhere where it sounds good to my ear. Okay, I like it about there. Maybe it's a little bit slow. It's going to be up to you. The slower we go, the longer it's going to be actually reducing the gain. So just keep that in mind. If we put this out to like two seconds, for example, it's not even really going to be recovered at all by the time it comes around and hits the next time. So that's way too slow, but... For me, 0.5 is just about right. So let's take this and let's bounce it. Go back in and turn off the original, and now we can listen to uh, what we have before and after. So here's the before and the after. So the after is a lot more quiet, but why don't we match the peaks again? And this is why you have a um, output gain control so that you can actually match the amount of reduction that you're doing. The thing I love about this particular compressor, aka dynamic equalizer, is that it doesn't do any like it, it doesn't try to trick you into just thinking because you're using a compressor, it's louder. It's very accurate. And when you're learning about compression, it's good to work with the accurate tools because um, even the really good quality paid compressors, 
they just always make the signal sound louder so you feel feel like you're doing something better but that's not really what's happening when you are doing compression especially here but it will have the perception of sounding louder when we match the peak gain so let's see what our peak is 4.2 let's check out our peak down here we're at 11.3 so we have to bring this up quite a bit i'm sorry guys my math is just terrible now that i don't go to school anymore and i make music 4.2 5.3 okay so i just need to bring this up by 7.1 all right, now if we listen to these back to back, you need to listen to how this second one is sustaining a little bit longer. All right, so you, can you see those envelope shapes? Can you see the difference there? I'll go ahead and just show them on, right on top of each other so that you can really see it. Choop. All right, so with the second one, we're getting the same peak value, but it's actually staying louder for longer, okay? So this is like transient shaping, bringing the initial transient down so that overall it's gonna have a little more sustain to the sound. So just look at those envelopes like we talked about before. Kind of a steep slope, not quite as steep of a slope. And we can do the inverse process as well, but that one's gonna require a little bit more thinking. Now I wanna do the inverse process. I want to have the transient sticking out more and the decay going down lower. So how am I gonna do that if I can't flip the ratio on its head? Let's look at our controls and see if we can figure something out here. So I'm gonna go back here into the wideband, just turn everything else off. So it's impossible for me to take this ratio and flip it, right? I can't expand the sound, I can only compress it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this attack to actually let me start my gain reduction later on in this envelope. So instead of it happening almost immediately, I don't want it to start happening until about this point in the signal. If I can bring this down, it's going to emphasize the transient that much more. All right. And then I can maybe use some output gain to even trick us even more by bringing the signal up in general. So <laughs> let's go in there and set that up. So we're playing back. Let's get some gain reduction occurring. Let's get our ratio to, let's go two to one this time. And with our attack really fast, again, we're gonna be now pulling down on that transient. But as I slow that up, listen to the beginning of the sound and hear how it starts to pop through. You can definitely hear that. Even at 10 milliseconds, we're definitely hearing a difference. So let's bypass it and bring it back in. So the transient is sticking out more, but it is still sounding a little bit quieter. And that's just because the we could go even slower on this, but what I'm going to do instead is use output gain to try to make this up. So let's go and uh, add a little bit of output gain. So if we're going down about four, we could probably add about four. And let's bypass. And now I'm gonna mess with the release a little bit. All right, that sounds exactly what I want. So you can hear that extra sustain. You can hear that extra low end ringing out. But once we put this compression in, it kind of goes away. Cool. So let's go ahead and bounce this and see if we've come close just by looking. Okay. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So you can see that the attack time, the longer attack time is letting more of this initial transient come through. And then it's starting to apply the gain reduction later on in the signal. And if I compare these two peak values, hopefully they're about the same. Let's see. So here's the peak for, uh oh, <laughs> so this peak is again for two. And this peak is actually at 2.1, so I could even bring this down a little bit more. So 
So let's say you were in a situation where you were really annoyed by the fact that the kick drum was ringing out more, like it is in this first example. You could use compression and gain reduction to actually make that transient stick out a little bit more and the decay go down while maintaining the same kind of peak signal. So uh, this would be a perfect example of that. We can listen to the three of these guys going back to back here and then we can close out this video. So here they are back to back to back.